<laughs> Telling somebody not to do something only drives it deeper to do it. Yes. Amen. Even if, mm. <laughs> You know what you do? Pray. That's right. Yes. Pray. Pray. And then thank Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it could be a lot worse. Trust me. Amen. It could go in a lot worse in your life. Amen. <laughs> You get an amen for that. Amen. Right. Well, we think that we have you know, oh, what I'm going through. So, but says other things, things in your life are no different than anybody else that suffers for, in their life. Things in your life. Amen. We magnify it. It's only happening to me. Yeah. Why is all this happening to me? You got an amen for that. Amen. Listen. Trust God to do what's absolutely best for you at all times and in all situations. Philippians 4, verse 11. Now, Paul said something amazing in this verse. This is something that didn't happen by osmosis, okay? It just didn't happen to him. He just said something here that's very, very, very potent. It says, not that I was ever in need, verse 11, for I have what? Learn. learn how to be content. That means I have to learn how to be content. It's not something that just happens. I have to <coughs> learn it. Amen. I have to what? Become a student of the Word of God mm -hmm. and learn how to be content with what I have. Mm -hmm. Because I'm never content with what I have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Always want better, more, faster. More money, right? Better, better clothes, better house, better this, better that. Never content. Look what it says. For I learn how to be content with whatever I, ha whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. Then he says, I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Now, there's all kinds of stuff out there that people try to buy into. But the secret to the keys of your life. And you buy this, yeah. this best-selling novel. And they give you a little taste of it. They say, buy the CD for $49. I'm going to tell you what the secret is. <laughs> yeah. And people fall into it and end up paying for it when the Bible gives it to you for nothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Bible gives it to you for free. Yeah. Some people don't want that kind of answer, though. See, that's the problem. They don't want God's ways. Right. They want to handle it in a humanistic form. Mm -hmm. It says right here, I have learned the secret of living in every, every situation. Every. You see it? Not just some. Everyone, but Paul had to learn that mm -hmm. it wasn't something that was just given to him. He had to learn how to. And how did he learn how to be content? Whatever he had by suffering, going to jail, getting whipped. That's right. For who? Jesus. Because he was living for God and not yeah. himself. Look, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through who? Christ. Christ who gives me strength. And Christ is what? The strength is in where? His word. The word. Exactly. The word that the word of God has all the power. The word of God is alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? Hebrews 4. Amen. It's alive and powerful. You're born again. That word of God is just as alive as it was when it was written. Amen. It's the living word. It's not the written word anymore. You're a born-again believer. It's the living word. Amen. This is the living word. Washed with the what? Watering of the word. The word is what cleanses you. Mm -hmm. Don't you wish you could take a shower and cleanse yourself of all sins? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. Give me a nice shower. All my sins are gone. They're done. No, no. They're done in God's eyes, but down here we're still contaminated. You wish one shower would take care of it. And you wake up in the morning and say, how'd that thing jump back on me? I gotta take another shower. <laughs> Give me an opportunity to keep taking showers. <laughs> the only thing that cleanses sin is the shedding of blood. And Jesus paid the final sacrifice at the cross for your sins. Amen to that, right? Look at it says in Luke, all right. He's the one who gives us strength. Luke 3. This is good. Two 
more scriptures here. The Raskin Loop. What should we do? Loop 3, verse 14. I'm asking John, what should we do, asked some soldiers. John replied, don't extort money or make false accusations, and be content with your pay. <laughs> oh. Ouch. We live in America. We're never content with our pay. <laughs> I've worked so hard, I deserve more money. <laughs> you remember? There was a parable where the guy hired workers in the morning. Yeah. Yes. Okay? And he put them to work in the fields. Yeah. Then he yeah. decided to get someone in the halfway point, yeah. and he put them yeah. to work. And when it got time to get paid, he paid them all the same money. And he yeah. said, "We work harder than anybody else. Who are you to tell me how much to give my servants?" Right. Yeah. And this is what people do at work. I work way harder than they do. I deserve way more money than they do. I'm smarter, better, and I deserve way more money than they do. Who are you to tell the boss who he should pay and what he should pay him? That's God's job, and this is what we do. Be content with your pay. Look, when I, when I go to work, I put blinders on. I don't even, look, I have to watch what I'm doing, never mind what everybody else yeah, is doing, right? and it's the other way around. Everybody's watching what I'm doing, and, I, and I'm like, well, whatever, keep watching. i got to work for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you catch on if you keep watching me. Yeah. And you yeah, keep right. stay busy when nobody's around. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because let me tell you something, somebody's always watching. God. <laughs> He's the one who put the boss in front of me. I have to what? Treat the boss like Jesus. And I have to treat my co-workers like I would treat Jesus too. Don't forget that part. Amen. Remember, you represent God. All right, the last verse for the night. First Timothy, verse 6. I'm running out of time already. Wow. First Timothy six. verse, yeah, First Timothy six verse six. It says, Paul's telling Timothy here, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Mm. You see, we think having money is great wealth, but money doesn't buy. Godliness with contentment. The more money you have, the more money you want. Yes, sir. It's the truth. You get a billionaire, that ha <laughs> you can't spend it. What do you want? I want to wait till I get the second billion. Yep. Then they yeah. go after a third billion. Then they want four billion. Yeah. Please give me give me like ten bucks. I'll take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. A billion. Really? Amen. They get consumed with that because you don't need it anymore. You want it now. Yeah. You don't really need it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then it, what? It takes away from people who need it. That's called gluttony. Mm -hmm. Amen. Gluttony is not just food. It's anything. Money. Mm -hmm. Sex. You name it. Mm -hmm. Look, it's great. After all, we brought nothing into us when we came out. When you came out of your mother's womb, you were naked. You were naked. You had nothing. They yeah, were butt naked. <laughs> and guess what? Just like in the garden, they felt no shame because there was no sin crept up in their life. That little yeah. baby don't feel any shame being naked. Don't care. Because they ain't nothing to hide. You get it? What do you think after they sinned, God had to cover them? Because they were trying to hide their sins from God. And we've been doing the same ever since. We've been covering ourselves with what? Status and I'm doing good and going to church. Covering ourselves, what? Because of our sins. We're doing the same thing. Now look what it says. We came into the world and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Yep. Plenty of food, plenty of clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yet, you got to be a fashionista, right? <laughs> get some yeah. more stuff. <laughs> I digress. But we all like that, right? I mean, I get so much stuff. Think about it. When you go, when you go to like move, <laughs> then you say, go there. "What the heck am I? How am I gonna ever get rid of? What am I gonna do with all this stuff?" Yeah. 
I only used like four things and I got 400 of them. Yeah. We want, we want, we want, we want, we get, we get, we get, we put it away, put it away. Well, I might, I might need it someday. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that show, Hoarders? It gets so obsessive mm -hmm. where people just keep piling up stuff where their whole house, they can't, there's a pack. Yeah. They, yeah. And then, they, then, then when it comes to the point they're so consumed by it, they can't even give it up. No. They don't want to get rid of nothing. No, it's a sin nature. Yeah, yeah it's sin disease, exactly. That's, just, that's their, you know, don't go judging them because that's their weakness. You have your own. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, no kidding. So is, sin is terrible. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Every bit of it. Yeah. Every bit of it, exactly. From you, from you, from them doing that to you just slandering somebody else and assassinating their character. Mm -hmm. Ain't no different in God's eyes. Amen. It's evil. Yeah. But yet we judge sin, right? Oh, I would never do that. Like the Pharisee was telling the tax collector, mm -hmm. I'm not like him. Yeah, right. I give all my money, I go to church faithfully, I read my Bible. And Jesus said, yeah, he's the one that knows he's a sinner and needs me. You don't. That's right, yeah. Amen. He's going. You ain't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. I, I, I'm like, I'm, I stop. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to judge anybody anymore. Nope. Amen. Because I can't, you know, the Bible tells me to judge myself. That's right. That's right. Don't judge other people. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to stop there, right? We'll pick on, up with this next week, all right? Thanks, Thank God. you for that. Thank you guys you have a great night. Brittany's going to come up and sing, and we're going to close. Thank mm -hmm. you.